we saw Ming playing a ton of Ash. It's like maybe leaning he towards that. Good. Yeah, yeah. He looked, uh, he looked so good playing Ash, actually. I feel like the spacing that he created on the map playing Ash, the way that he was using that to weave and gauge his three members was phenomenal. However, no hoverers here, Munchables. He's going to be the tra the true Tristana coming through. However, Scar now has been left open through the draft, and usually this is a handshake that you see between B1 and Red Side. Tristana coming on through, and uh, maybe LG decide they want to go for the Ash this time. I will quickly mention as well, RNG played the Ash versus WE. It actually wasn't Ming that played it. It was Juan Fong that played it. I've been talking a little bit about maybe this is a Juan Fong where Ash in, Jin in, Ezreal we've seen a little bit uh -oh. of. Uh oh. But let's see what goes alongside this Ash down. They all look scary. It does look like it's gonna be support, They all look but... scary. Yeah, these are kill lengths. These are absolutely the, the kill lengths. It's corky. <laughs> the Kalista, the Draven, the Samira, all three of them look absolutely scary when you look at BLG's bot lane. However, they're not gonna lock in their bot lane yet because as you very well mentioned, the only reason that it was one fan with the Ash. This is the this is W in their series was because there was a bleed scrag that was lurking around. So they did put asses and they carry. So they don't play double squishies towards the bots out of the map. And I feel like BLG could very well pivot to the same thing. Let's see if the blitz crack is gonna work out. As uh BLG I think likely to send that ash as the hidden carry similarly. And on gonna play something that can soak these hooks. Alistair, I feel like is a fantastic answer. You Really don't mind being hooked in as Alastair. In fact, it helps you out quite a bit. So I'm going to slam that one immediately. We're going to see Knight's Corky in the mid lane. And it's bot lane and mid locked in for BLG. Whereas on the side of RNG, they've got their support, they've got their mid laner, and they've got their jungler. So now an opportunity to potentially ban away AD carries on the side of BLG. Yeah, Draven got. Um, any deja vu coming here potentially for RNG? This is the exact comp that they picked versus WG when they knew that the Blitzstorm was coming through. They peeled with the Ash onto the AD carry position with the Alistair Bow locked in, as I said, a very good uh, response from there. However, AP junglers um, to be around Corky, the Karthus, the Brand, Lilia has been taken away immediately. Another one of those champions that shouldn't really like to play alongside his kindred. To be honest, I'm a little surprised there wasn't more priority on getting Shun Nidalee. We've seen other teams just blinding Nidalee. We've seen Nidalee locked in in drafts that doesn't feel like it has that much lane priority to work with, and it still feels really strong in the game. So I'll be amazed if RNG don't ban away the Nidalee, to be honest, just out of sheer fear of Shun's Nidalee. Like, look, if we're banning the Jax on blue side, surely we're banning Shun's Nidalee. I guess not. Maokat take it off the board. Yeah, I feel like this is going to be Nidalee unless they're baiting to play something completely different, more facilitated in the jungle, which I wouldn't necessarily like no, it here. I feel like yeah, Nidalee, <laughs> Nidalee just freaking works. You know, the poke from Ash, the slows from Ash as well. Make sure that the Q's hit. It's an absolute disaster if you get bullied by Nidalee in your jungle as well. And Waze piloting the, the Lilia who wants to farm. How in the world did this champion get to the second pick phase after 10 bans on the board is way beyond the BLG. Do not give a heck about the Skarner being okay. No, certainly not. I mean, to be honest, I feel Skarner has been lackluster on some teams. Some games, he looks absolutely ridiculous, totally insane, winning games by himself. Other games, he looks kind of useless. I will say, Skarner Ezreal has been a terrifying a uh, little combo that we've seen where Skarna ults multiple people guarantees the true shot barrage. But it's going to be the Jin locked in for Wong Fong. I'm sure you all remember him ulting from the enemy base at the World Championship many, many years ago now. We named that the Wong Fong. We'll see if he's going to do that again. I feel like there's a very rare opportunity to actually pull that kind of play off. Um, yeah, but I was about to say you need to get to the enemy base first. And BLG. They're not gonna go. They're not gonna go lightly about that one. Uh, man, I don't no, no. think so. They have literally locked. It's skill... just all carries. It's just all carries. I was about to say that they're literally locked skill-based matchups everywhere. BLG is literally screaming, "We're just better than you." The TF top lane, the Nidalee jungle, the quirky mid, Ash. Like everyone is literally squishy. When the fights start, everyone fends for themselves on BLG. There, there's an Alistar there. 
And that's about it. That Alistair has so many jobs, throwing the scanner away, trying to catch the Lilia, maybe the Tristana, tanking the hooks. Like, on right here, he's on a five, uh, five call duty. Yeah, I will say, Ming has potential opportunity with that Twisted Fate locked in as well. Elk is a great hook target, but also Bin. Bin has locked in a champion that, like, realistically is soft countered by Blitzcrank. They're on opposite sides of the map for the laning phase. But when it comes to later on, he could be another great target for Ming to try and focus on. We'll see how Ming is looking. You know, he's playing a champ that's gold. His shirt is gold. Let's see if the combo <laughs> can pay off here for RNG. So happy to see BLG also come back confident from MSI. Locking in quadruple carry in the debut game in the LPL Summer Split versus RNG. Let's see how BLG are going to do as they head to the rift against RNG. And you know these two teams have big old fan bases. I'm hoping for some stronger JOs than we got in the first series of the day. But carry jungles on both sides. It, this feels like it could be a volatile game of League of Legends. RNG looking for redemption after their loss against WE to start the split. BLG making their debut here in summer, fresh from MSI. Let's see how they look as we head to the rift. I'm not going to lie to you. I couldn't tell which one was BLG and which one was RNG because they sound very similar. Yeah. They, but they, they both I'm, were pretty good ones. I feel like the camera guys are like, oh my God, there are white people in the audience. Zoom in immediately. Um, <laughs> yeah, weird, weird Gios. Bonus scream at the end of them as well. Uh, let's get into the game. BLG versus RNG, and instantly RNG going for a lane swap here. The Blitzcrank can make this real spicy. If Bin doesn't see this coming, he's a very easy target. I don't think he has. He only saw Skarner going in and out of the tribe brush. Oh, they have spotted the Blitzcrank towards the top side of the map. So maybe they're expecting this. Again, you have to see the pros and cons right here. Uh, a con for RNG is that they're not really in the lane that they wanted to be in. Maybe hooking the Ash, getting the flash of the enemy AD carry could be huge. However, the team that has the tank on the top lane benefits the most when a lane swap happens for that team. And being right here, of course, being on a carry, he wants to be in a lane where he farms a lot. Now he's actually going to fall back. Try to potentially like, find his jungler somewhere to try and get some experience, help maybe push the wave or whatever. But he's going to be completely isolated versus three members from RNG. He's going to spot Wei as well, and the map is going to be split. Uh, this is dicey positioning from Bin. Bin Ooh. finds the hook. Bin, I don't know what you're doing there, buddy. He's going to go down. Surely flashes underneath the mid lane tower. Does survive with his life. That's both summoners gone. Yeah, he's added a little bit of a difficulty in this particular uh, mismatched matchup of, uh, of a game, if you will, playing versus RNG. However, for Bin, a big uncharacteristic mistake, right? That he was holding the gold card as well, doesn't end up gold carding the Blitzcrank, which means that Ming finds a pretty good hook right there to completely punish Bin. And I remember we said a lot of the lane swaps right now do not last as long as we expect them to do. He hasn't even passed into swap bot lane because he's really desperately in need of some CSing, of some experience. Because when he goes back to lane level two, level three, this is going to be a completely summonerless um, twisted fate. And it could be extremely pivotal for RNG to punish that when everything goes back to normal in terms of laning phase. Keeping our eyes on Way if he does try and influence that top lane matchup. Really nice start. One thing I will say for Twist of Fate and Lane Swap, very good at uh, getting damage down onto those plates alongside your AD carry. Now you're trading in the mid lane with XZZ. Ooh, Remember, this Orky. is XZZ's first game of the LPL. He's got Tristana, the pick of the uh, X Flavor of the Month right now in terms of those mid lane picks. Let's see how he does. I mean, what a matchup. Your debut game in the LPL and you have to go against Knight, who's fresh back from MSI. Like, <laughs> that just doesn't feel fair. Yeah, on a Corky as well, which is probably like, if not the strongest, the, this is like the Holy Trinity, I want to say. The Corky, the Tristana, and the Huey are probably the, the Holy Trinity of mid laners right now. The low mid laners would very happily pick blindly on that mid lane and they're both holding one in their hands, Knight. 
pulling out his counterpart from the lane. And uh, right now, we're gonna go straight back to normal. However, I do like what BLG are doing here. Reminder that Bin does not have his summoners up and available, so it is going to be Knight taking that top side of the map, having his flash up, and Bin sticking more on a shorter lane, if you will, to try and stay safe during the first stages of that game until his summoners are back up. Excellent macro right here from BLG. Yeah, I mean, Twist of Fate is a mid lane, classically, so he's going to feel perfectly comfortable in that mid lane on saving the cannon just long enough so Elk is in range to get that last hit as well as he goes in on the bottom side. Ming the target. Root does come on through onto the Alistair and pulls That's underneath power. the tower on barely surviving, but will walk away with his life. Elf. Elk now the next target as the full shot comes in and barrier used by Elk. That was a very, very nice trade from RNG. BLG are going a little bit too aggressive towards the bolt side of the map. And I'm getting completely punished. Both summoners burn for Elk and on. You see a little bit of a difficulty with one fang walking forward towards an ash, getting permanently slowed, especially when you've got four shots. Oh, elk. No. elk. Does he have the elk. flash? Does he have the flash? Oh, <gasps> does get away with it. The ignite and the flash traded. That was a great guess by Ming right there as well, knowing that Elk was going to step towards the left side. Flashes to the right. Now that he's two summoners, and again. This was the reason why we said that was the minus of the lane swap. You want to be without Blitzcrank versus an Ash lane. Forcing a summoner is huge. So Ash cannot step up, which means you could get a lot of control towards the bot side. River frees your Lilia a lot to, yeah. um, to farm as well. However, the con, uh, the, sorry, the pro outweighed the con, which was bringing Bin a little bit further down in terms of CS and, and experience. There's another weird thing we're seeing from this lane swap that is worth mentioning. Uh, Knight is level 6, as is XZZ, whereas Bin and ZDZ are both level 4. So there's a huge experience advantage towards these two mid laners in their matchup. So Bin has to be very cautious in that mid lane because XZZ will 100-0 to zero him if he doesn't uh, play cautiously. And a similar story for ZDZ up top. Needs to really, really respect the damage that Corky could bring. Looks like Knight is going to swap back to the mid lane, though. We won't see any kills coming through off the back of it. The LG decide it's time to start getting some objectives, and they go for that Drake in trade for the Grubs. Again, such impeccable macro right here. They know that Lilia is always the top set of the map. Bot lane for RNG was resetting, so what the LG did was they transitioned the bot lane into the river, and they knew that the swap between Knight and Bin was happening, which means, as you mentioned, they have the strongest member in their mid lane right now. It's no longer that level 4 Twisted Fade, which allows them to actually dip into the river and maybe have a 4 4 fight if so breaks out. So that's great stuff from BLG right there to try and trade objectives on the map. However, this Ash still flashed on the bot side of the map. And I am looking at Wei, who does have his ultimate, has no back, it doesn't have a lot of mana. But after a reset, I'm expecting to potentially see a play towards that bot side. <laughs> see if Wei was going to try and punish. He has have his reset, actually. His... I'm sorry, he does have Fated Ashes. He does have Fated Ashes, yeah. He's level 6 at this point as well. So Lily has got through this stage of the game where you just want to farm, and he can start to really impact these lanes a little bit. Whether or not we see that come through is a different question. We have seen some very... Uh, sort of vegan Lilias across the course of LPL so far. Ooh, Wait, not wanting life. to be that. Throws the Swirl Seed. Only hits onto On. There's a root. It's a bit of damage coming through, but not going to lead to much. Very nicely threatening right there. Because if that hit onto Elk, Elk does not have a way of dodging this. You get stunned in place. You get hooked by Ming right there. You end up dying. That would be a pretty favorable trade, obviously, for RNG. But even just the raw pressure of knowing Lulia is around. Hold on. Oh, Hawk shot to allow on to engage into the ult from Elk. And Shun is here to finish the job as well. First blood for BLG, and they make it look good. You know when you feel like you've done so well? He's like, yeah, we pressured that bot lane. We crashed the wave. We got some vision into this uh, bot lane tri brush. We're doing absolutely freaking great. And BLG just turned it straight on its head. And they just take a kill. And it's going to be on Ash as well. I will starve into due to that flash being taken away. The Hawkshot, as you mentioned, allowing for the vision for Owen to engage. Shun is around as well. We'll grab a, uh, an assist for himself. And again, BLG bot lane. One of the most feared, if not the most feared, in the LPL pulling out ahead. Phenomenal stuff coming through. 
And, uh, you know, it's been a quite a quiet early game, honestly. When you consider this matchup, I thought it was going to be a much more aggressive start. And that's sort of the, the power of lane swaps uh, when it comes to that top side. But ultimately, it is still BLG managing to get out on top. And over a thousand gold lead for them so far. RNG might want to continue to stack these grubs. They are going to spawn again in 60 seconds time. And luckily for BLG, not at the same time as Drake. So desync between these two objectives means BLG do have time to potentially contest these the second spawn of grubs and still be able to go for Drake. Yeah, and as you can see on the map, RNG already on the top side of the map. Ming has already set down some vision for himself and for the team. However, Bin... He has not backed yet to buy much. So his inventory looks kind of empty right now. However, he could very easily go back to base. He's going to cancel his EDZ as well. Very importantly, very low mana on this Scar. And if they choose to fight towards the top of the map for the Void Grabs, the EDZ would have to most likely burn his teleport, reset the burn his teleport to go into the fight. But the reason why this slows down the game in general with the lane swaps is because the top laners are not gonna be that strong to join the fight yet. You saw sort of the uh, the level disparity between mid lane and top lane it was like two levels difference. Uh, however, it is still two levels difference between ZDC and Knight at this point. But Knight's probably the, uh, the person with the most experience, at least on the rift for now. Well, he's gonna start these grubs off on trying to move in to contest as well. It's yeah, nice. I don't know if belongs to him. I mean, Knight is 30 CS up in the mid lane <laughs> right now. Poor Exy. Again, imagine this having to be your debut opponent. The first time you play in the LPL and you're up against Knight. First group taken by BLG. ZDZ moving in to try and contend. There's Knight TP's up to the play as well. TP comes out from XZZ, but it's ZDZ caught out to start off with. Elk finds it. Ming moves in, gets a hook onto On. And maybe they can turn it around, but On survives with the Unbreakable Will. The form is in his ticking and he blows to smithereens in the end. But it's BLG happy to trade two for one. And RNG are still sticking around. Funfang is going to join them right now. They know that there's no massive ultimates available for the side of BLG. But at the end of the day, they're just going to pull out another victory right here for BLG. 3-0 and zero actually on Elk. And it was quite magnificent how when On tanked the entire fight, everyone just piled up to try and help him to survive, but it just wasn't the case. Again, On, we mentioned it at the draft. He's coming into this game with a huge responsibility on his head. He has to be the engage. He has to be the disengage. He has to be the one tanking the shots. He has to be the one tanking the hook. He has to do it all. It certainly does. Alistair's the pick for it, I will say. We see yeah, the value true. of level six Alistair, right? He tanked so much with his ultimate. And hooking him in. Kirk Hawking through as well. I mean, there's a lot of damage coming out from RNG, but like you say, aren't able to block so much. And in the meantime, there's a hook, and it's on to on once again. He's tanking once more, and Huang Feng finishes with the flash fourth shot. Yeah, not having the ultimate right there, you're not quite as durable in these fights, especially when you're on a 1v3 or 2v3 scenario. So great punish from RNG right here to find a kill onto their Jin. You want him to be as strong as possible in that mid game, especially since. Jin is like the perfect pick versus BLG. Everyone is so squishy. The only thing that Jin actually struggles with is killing those huge HP building tanks. And there's really any on the side of BLG. It's just a support on on. And supports don't have the best financial situation to start building items as fast yeah. as possible. So getting your Jin ahead right here, you could potentially one-shot whoever you just hook in. Feels like a pretty good angle, honestly, like you say, for Hong Pong. Don't be happy with the way that draft went in terms of being able to get that damage out as Jin. I will say, Jin just does a lot of damage these days as well. It feels like even the tanks don't withstand Jin quite like they used to. It's like those crit item improvements helped Jin a lot during the break. Uh -oh. Bin now getting aggressed upon once again. Flash forward to get that sleep underneath the tower, but the flash is already used and the big finds the hook. It's an easy kill away. Well played by RNG. Absolutely. I mean, Bin flashing right there when he's kind of already dead. Uh, a little bit of a redundant flash. Loses his summoner as well, which is huge. But again, RNG are punishing accordingly. Topside has been pummeled the entire game. This is this was the reason for the early draft as well, right? And also when they caught on without his uh without his ult, 
capitalized onto him as well. However, the leads on the map keep piling up. We'll see bot lane wave oh, pushed. No. Mid lane even. XZ overextended. He should have finished. Oh, oh knows the flash is coming, but the spear Wait. misses from Shun. That's a bit of a Shun, disaster. Come on, man. And XZ come gets on. away with it. He was one auto away from that plate as well. He thought he'd calculated it. The tower survived, or the plate survived on about one HP there on the top side. 3-3 three to three on the scoreboard. It's 3,000 gold lead for BLG, but honestly, nowhere near as one-sided as I think a lot of people were expecting coming in today. BLG, literally the top team from the LPL, reigning champions, up against RNG, a team struggling uh, in the previous split. So, Ross changes, here we go, Elk in trouble, Mink pulls him in, but he pulls him into his own demise, one bong with a fourth shot, trades it, support for support, and XZ flies into the play! It's a win um, for RNG bit? again, as Ben is underneath the tower, what?! <laughs> you were talking about how slow the game was to begin with, and I was like, that's not in BLG's classic fashion. When they have these types of champions in their hands, they'll literally just throw everyone in and try to take as many advantages. However, there is a TP right there into two members of RNG Knight. That's if he's fast available to get out for, of a potential dive, but oh my god. Everything that's happening right now is going in favor of the newbie on the rift, XZZ, has found himself with three kills onto this Tristana off the back of this place. And I feel like PLG are playing a little bit more overzealous than they should. Elk is just walking onto a Blitz Crank, altering him in his face, eating the hook on purpose. He's like, yeah, okay, then what? I can survive it. Byron got buffed. Yeah, I mean, let's take a look. So Elk and On just look for a 2v2. He just tanked it. He has flashed. Elk, he just yeah, tanked on, it. On flies in, <laughs> sacrifices himself. One Fog just about survives. But then at this point, right, XZ gets the kill. Great stuff. Finn just full sends it. He's like, you know what? I don't care. We're trading kills here, buddy. I'm going down. You're going down. Everyone's going down. Finn is having a game. That is for sure. Uh, I, I don't, I don't you know really what? know. Look, they're back. They're you just don't. back from us. Like, they're having a bit of fun. I think that's yeah. acceptable behavior. Oh, you know what? This is the point where if you're XZ, you, uh, no, if you have Quan Fang, sorry, you put a question mark in all chat, and then the person that just dived you, which was Bane, replied with. IDC. <laughs> I don't care. I, I got to say, I bet everyone in chat is gutted because they were so ready to spam XDD. You just know it. Like, it's just destiny that that is going to be spam when this guy has a bad game. And he's having a great game. 3 0 and 1 so to far XDD. on his debut. He may be 40 CS down. He may be 1,500 gold down. But he's got three kills, and we absolutely take those. KDA King right there. XZZ. Picking up all those skills and deservedly so. I think he's played he's played quite well so far. Not getting solo kid by night is also a, a pretty big uh, fit right here. Yeah. For the new mid lane of RNG. Ooh. Just about hit. And uh, BLG, they're still gonna take the heat at you. Being 3,000 gold in the lead is more than enough for BLG. They've won with less. They're gonna try to find a lot of picks on the map. Their vision hasn't been as stellar as usual. But that's because of, uh, of a lot of the fight that has been going on. They haven't necessarily had the time to just sit down and set up for themselves. However, with that mid lane tower going down, they're taking complete control of the top side quadrant. They're making sure that Bane is more than safe to push that wave whilst they focus on putting down the refill, creating more pressure mid lane to set up for the Dragon Lists. Herald will get the charge. That is tier two in the mid lane. And like you say, Drake spawning. This will potentially be sold for BLG. You'd expect, or not sold, sorry, sold point for BLG. You'd expect them to just get this uncontested based on Wei's position on the map. You don't really, it doesn't look like RNG really wants to try and even contest this. So another objective for BLG. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I feel this has been going pretty well for RNG compared to expectations. It's still not going well in terms of like them actually winning the game. You know, this is still a pretty sizable lead for BLG. I'm kind of worried right here. There is a reason why RNG, of course, didn't opt to contest that one. They didn't have any vision. Their mid lane was being pushed in. They had to stand on top lane, had to push out that wave. There was one wave bot lane being pushed. Like, the BLG are like macro kings. They will push every single wave. They'll put pressure on at least two out of three waves, uh, lanes, sorry, and then dip into that neutral objective completely uncontested, sure. However, in four minutes' time, when the next dragon comes up, it's going to be sold for BLG. 
This is going to be at least two items in the inventories of BLG and one and a half in RNG. So if anything, they could have potentially tried to take a fight right here where the items look quite even and try to potentially get a pick, maybe find a cheeky Baron that spawns in 50 seconds. Everyone again is so squishy on the side of BLG. So one good hook from Ming could turn a fight around. Certainly could. And that's the power of the Blitzcrank, especially in a composition like this where you've got four squishy targets. Obviously, On doesn't mind being hooked. He, oh, hang on, oh. he's found one of those squishy targets. It's Elk caught out in the middle lane. Flash from Ming to set up a pick. And RNG now can snowball into more. Looking for On, potentially. This will see dodge, though. That was perfect timing. They had the exact timer from Elk's flash because he used it in the previous skirmish between Ming Quanfang and the bolt lane of BLG. Great stuff right there from Ming Nu. Elk's flash was just about to come off of cooldown. And this is the power of the Blitzcrank. Four squishy members on the set of BLG. One hook is enough for Ming to bring them down. Now, the caveat here is that you do have a Twisted Fate if you're BLG and you can't play towards a split push if you so wish to do that. That's what's this again. Great flash prediction on the queue. The Lilia ball hits as well. Everyone gets an assist on that one. Fantastic stuff from Ming. Good to see Ming finding these hooks as well as the Blitz Crank. It's a very uh, binary champion. You either hit or you don't, and uh, that's sort of all you're bringing to a lot of fights. On standing at the front just in case Ming goes for a hook into the brush, but BLG now trying to set up for Baron. They've denied yeah, all of the vision in the area, and now RNG have to try and muscle in. I don't know if they're going to be able to, but Ons looking for a fight himself. Arrow comes out, it's on to CDZ, but there's so much damage on this roster that any target is fine. They charge on forwards, tank down, night charging forwards again. As now Kern Cole flies through, oh. Shun tagged by it, trying to escape, Knight trying to block. Oh! But the force shot hits on instead, they still get a kill. And then poor supports. They're obliged to block for everyone, but no one blocks for them. Okay, you know, honestly though, I guess that was a little bit of a miscommunication error because there were two members uh, of BLG that were super low on HP. So unfortunately, you have to sort of stand on the same line from the person covering you because she can't, like, no one can cover you both unless they fra flash in front of a bullet where they don't know where it's coming from, so. Yeah. Pretty good snipe again from Fun Feng. This Jin, I'm not gonna lie, is looking very, very, very dangerous. That was, of course, a fight that started on BLG's terms. They get the engage with the Ash Arrow and they take control of that choke point. They push Lilia in from, from on. That was great stuff. They take down the Skarno, which is the only front line from the set of RNG, and then they feel safe. But Shun and On are both pretty low. And right here, On thinks he's out. He thinks he's out, but he's not really. Just catches it. Just a slight gap between him and the other two players in front. Nice shot from Wong Fong. And an arrow comes out from Elk. Won't find its target, though. And RNG, again, like, so much pressure on Ming to find these hooks. The spear lads are shut. There is so much poke available from this BLG composition. There's a, a little bit of poke coming out from Wong Fong in response to these swirl seats, but it's not, it's not really enough. Yeah, BLG have got complete control of the bot side. Dragon spawning in 35 seconds as well. That will be so for them. Ooh, maybe right. we're looking for a hook, but unfortunately the Blitzcrank was all the, ba all the way back in base, bringing those wolves, trying to take some control, potentially contest. Again, one hook is all it takes from me. How did RNG even get close though? It feels like BLG have complete control right now with Drake for 20 seconds. How did RNG get in here? Ming is looking. There are flashes on all carries of BLG, and somebody has to respond to this madman that's pushing the towers down bot lane, the 2,000 plus gold lead, Twisted Fate, in the top lane. Someone has to respond, it's going to be XZZ. And Mink, he's looking, potentially any pick, but with all these slows and projectiles flying RNG's way, it's not that easy to just face check them all. I love how BLG, like, Drake was spawning, and I thought we were going to have a bit of a Drake fight. I thought the two teams were going to move towards that. And BLG are like, uh, we're not actually in any rush here. Let's use the pressure mid, get a tier two in the far side. Then we can go and get our Cloud Soul literally uncontested by RNG. Like, it just feels like BLG are running this map, and RNG, they have to dance to BLG's tune. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, these guys are known for how good their macro is. Again, they had a pressure point in the bot lane with Bin, shoving in under tower, taking that tier two. Then they had to respond to the mid push as well. Somebody had to respond to Bin. The second the BLG saw that one member had to respond to the bot lane wave, this is where they pulled the trigger for the Baron. And this is just very collective and patient gameplay coming in from BLG. Yes, we expected more of a blood buff, but if you end up giving too many kills away, again, Huan Feng is fed enough that if one hook lands from Ming, someone is going to get one shot. So BLG have to play also a little bit cautious, even though they're quite far ahead. These swirl seeds just slightly to the side of the wave to try and catch out L. Spots them though, hook oh, goes wide oh as well. God. LG are kind of, they're kind of chilling, <laughs> honestly, in the mid lane. Just Elk and on contesting five players. And you talked about the split push from Bin earlier. Well, he has spent the last, like, five minutes just pushing his bot wave out. Players from RNG now having to go and respond. Elk's arrow available. Two players towards the bot side from RNG. Perhaps an angle for BLG to look for a pick, but instead, going to move over towards Baron and set vision. Not yet spotted through a ward, but... Intuition right there, I guess. When you only see three members of RNG, it makes you think, where are the other two at? Wait, XCZ spot. Bin's looking for the destiny, I think. Perhaps an angle for BLG to find a fight. Knight moving over. XCZ still pushing towards the tier two, and it looks like Bin nope, is going to respond down. instead and clear that wave. And this is BLG controlling all waves, or they will not make... Oh, hold up. Oh, no, the Yellow destiny! Card. Go Yellow card! card! Yellow card! Oh! The roulette started on blue. It was maximum available time until gold card could come out. XEZ TPs to safety. Well played by him to just instantly try and get out of there. Yep, he got out, evaded that gang. On was on his way. That was the boss out of the map. Again, BLG love contesting your waves. They love having control of the map. Right now, the only objective on the map is going to be Baron and the entire top side whether it's their jungle or opponent jungle, has been lit up. Not only are they aware of where RNG is coming from, but they're also aware of any type of plan TP that could be pulled onto them from their jungle. Again, superior vision right here, pushing through the top side of the map as well. And we need to wait and see. Bin right now needs to actually group up with his team. Doesn't have the ultimate available to join them, so he needs to stay as close as possible. Yeah, Destiny a long cooldown as well. As uh, he's on three items on the Twisted Fate. We've got three items for Knight as well. Two items for Shun. Two and a half for Elk. It's a strong BLG on dodges the hook. Looking for a blue buff here as a shot lands. That's two stuns coming through. CDZ looking to fall as well. Two stuns, two kills. BLG, when they find a target, they do not let them go. There's just too much damage on this BLG composition. One person gets stunned. Ming! Ming, run for your life! He's trying. He's trying. He made it. Okay, Ming Why is out. Why are we doing Baron? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> chasing Ming what? through the mid lane, I guess what clearing Baron? the wave to deny the tier one. BLG turns to Baron in the end. And I guess just making sure that they don't even lose a single objective in response. I feel like right there it was mostly trying to push them off of mid lane to not take that mid lane tier one. This was going to be huge for RNG to try and take some control on the map, especially since Baron was most likely going to go towards uh, BLG. And let's see this again. Way overextends. He thinks that blue buff is his. He flashes away from a gold card. That's not how you do it. You don't flash away from these things. You can only cleanse them and ends up going down. Now, that arrow, I'm going to say it was pointed towards way. But hey, it netted them two kills. So, pretty good aim from Elk. Nice stuff coming out from BLG. Two stuns, two kills. It's 8-8 eight and eight on the scoreboard. I can't believe that this is so even in kills. However, uh, in gold, not so Look much. It's an 8,000 gold bit. lead at this point. Yeah, Bin. Bit. Wait, he's almost got a flame horizon. Oh my god, yes. he's like 80 5. CS 4K. up. That is kind of insane. Wait, yeah, 5,400 gold <laughs> individually. The lead. Gold that is ridiculous. <laughs> He's like 70% of the team's gold lead. And he's not even got many kills. He's literally, that's his passive and just pushing towers. Like Munch. he's the one that's been getting all this local gold for side lane towers. He was the reason the lane swap happened level one and he still gave up 5,000 gold. Oh, oh no, bye -bye. stun onto Ming. That's a pick, that much of a game, honestly. BLG don't oh. usually let games go longer than they need to. 
TDZ trying to get into the mix here. Elk, the target, flashes away from the Skarner ultimate, though, and should even dodges. The fourth shot, hit onto on. That's going to be two in hip still barren for another minute. So the siege begins onto the Nexus Towers. Respawn's coming through. Ming still in the death chamber. On goes down. Diving underneath the Nexus Towers here. It's a positive fight for RNG. Maybe they can turn it into more. 3v3. But Ming spawning in five seconds. BLG have to retreat. Yeah, it's time to bail for BLG right there. They beat a little bit more than they could chew, you know? We said they need to play a little bit more aggressive, and some instances in this game, they have played a little bit too aggressive. However, there are massive shutdowns on the Corky and the TF that you don't want to be given away. Again, I feel like one hook makes or breaks the game for uh, for RNG right here. So if Ming does manage to find that miraculous hook, we could even be talking about a four versus five in favor of RNG or BLG. This, this, is, this is Elder. They're Shut's still it. dead. Shun's still dead right now. BLG have to 3v4 if they want to contend with this Elder. Arrow goes in from Elk. Bin moving in with the gold card. Stuns onto Ming. Dodges the hook himself. But Smite should be able to come through. There's no Here, this There's no should fight. be Elder. It's taken by Huanfeng in the end. As Bin gets out with his life. On has arrived on the scene. That's an Elder Dragon for RNG. XCC just going to TP to the base because there's so many minions. But BLG don't want to let the recalls come on through. Wait. They don't want to let these buffs get away. It's 4v3, they're being chased down in the bottom side. RNG corralled by BLG, chased to the ends of the earth. But there is nowhere you can run. Nowhere is safe. Sean pounces for another as Wei will fall for the double. And even with Elder, RNG are routed. That was the last chance that they had, and this is one of the very few times where I see a team secure Elder and then get absolutely chased down. BLG, no mercy in this game. They've got two inhibitors down. They're going to bring in the waves. They're going to look to close the game out here. Uh, oh, well. Sean has been hooked. He is still alive. The bomb not quite enough, and Elder not quite enough. How the hell does he get away with that one? And it's Ming to fall instead. Oh. XZ still has Elder. The bomb taken up in, but the primal surge comes through from Shun. That's twice now that Shun's heal saves a player from the Elder buff. XZ gets engaged on and gets evaporated. That's going to be game. BLG. Not the cleanest game of their history, but a win nonetheless. 1-0 now over RNG. A night laughing as this game ended. 5-0 and 6 on the Corky. Fantastic performance. Uh, Ecstasy unfortunately did the very vital mistake of breathing in this game. Um, and uh, as you saw, BLG did not like that towards the end. He was the only holder with an Elder Dragon on him.